Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat and our next novel, a beautiful novel, a speculative novel under Canadian literature is Oryx and Crake. Definitely an important one by Margaret Atwood. Listen to all the details of Oryx and Crick, published in the year 2003, written by Margaret Atwood. The genre is speculative fiction and adventure romance. Actually, people called it a sci-fi or a science fiction, but Margaret said, no, 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 do not call it a sci-fi because my novel does not deal with things that a human can't do. All this is doable. So call it speculative fiction. Okay, ma'am, we will call Oryx and Craig speculative fiction. Setting of Oryx and Craig is North America, but the year is not specified. Mostly it is late 21st century. Narrator is Snowman's perspective. Basically the protagonist is Snowman. So his perspective and there is a third person limited narrator. Okay. Protagonist, as I told you, is Snowman, also known by the name Jimmy. And Oryx and Craig is a part of a trilogy. It is the first of the Mad Adam trilogy. This is important from competitive exam point of view. So Mad Adam trilogy's first novel is Oryx and Craig, followed by The Year of Flood of 2009. And the third novel is Mad Adam of 2013. Crux of the novel, as I always say, this novel, Oryx and Craig, follows two storylines, present and past. Past will also be called as flashback. Present is the post-apocalyptic world. Apocalypse, you know, it is complete destruction of the world. So the world is destroyed. The human beings are destroyed. The post-apocalyptic world represents the novel's present. Okay. Now, how apocalypse or this catastrophe has come over after a lethal plague hit Earth, the entire human population has been wiped out. All that remains are Krakers. Who are Krakers? They are genetically manipulated group of beings who can easily survive in this kind of environment. And one human being, one special survivor human being who remains in this present time is Snowman. And what does this Snowman do? He actually guides and watches over these crackers while struggling very hard to survive in these conditions, okay? And the second part of the novel will be the past or the flashback, which this snowman will keep on thinking in his mind. Memories, memories will come in his mind. That is what will form the past of the novel, which will be a pre-apocalyptic world before the destruction did not happen. Yes, that will represent the novel's past. In the past, Snowman went around with the name Jimmy and his mates in the past were two people named Oryx and Craig. Oryx and Craig. Craig is a man, Oryx is a woman. We will know everything about Oryx and Craig and a lot about Snowman and Craigers. Let's move along with the summary of the novel Oryx and Craig. I have to tell you this, very important. Whatever is in the black today will form the novel's present. Whatever is in this shade of blue will form the novel's past or flashback. Easy? So black means present. It is morning. Snowman wakes up on a tree. Yes, he literally lives on a tree. A kind of catastrophe has hit earth, but we do not know what it is yet. Snowman eats the scanty food that he has stored. He struggles hard to survive in this harsh hybrid environment. Whereas Krakers or the children of Krak, they are very happy. They have easily adapted to this kind of surrounding. Snowman is the only human surviving around this sea, this seashore. He watches over these creatures, which are called Krakers. Krakers sit around Snowman and they ask him, they literally pester him to tell them stories from the past. Snowman, snowman, tell us all about past when we were not born. Snowman is a storyteller, let me tell you. He is a man of words. For him, writing, reading is very important. So Snowman weaves a mythological tale for the Krakers about Krik, whom he says is their god or their creator. So Krik created Krakers and 
he also talks about a lady called Oryx, who is their caregiver or who was their caregiver when they were little, little. And this Oryx is also the creator of plant and animal life. The plants and animals are called as the children of Oryx. And Snowman tells Krakers that Krakers must respect the children of Oryx. Children of Krake are Krakers and children of Oryx are plant and animal. Easy. Now, when Snowman is alone, he has flashbacks from his past. He cannot sleep. He cannot lie down when he closes his eyes. He sees his past and memories erupt. It is a very disturbing past. It is the time when he was called Jimmy. It is the time when humans existed. And it is the time when plague had not destroyed Earth. Let's move to the stories. Flashback. Let's listen Jimmy's childhood, okay? Jimmy is snowman only, right? In the flashback, he's called Jimmy. Jimmy grows up inside a compound where rich scientists and their families live. These compounds are secluded from the outside world, which is called plebe lands. So let me tell you, this is just like normal earth, normal right now that we're living in. Basically, this uh, you know place where he lives is divided into two parts. One is the part where scientists live, where they conduct experiments, very deadly experiments these are. Okay, so they live inside a compound where rich scientists and their families live. Jimmy's parents are working here inside the compound. So he is secluded from the other human beings. These compounds are secluded from the outside world, which is called plebe lands. So what is the outside world called in Oryx and Craig? Plebe lands. The theme of dominance of corporate power. How corporates can actually divide the world. That is discussed. Okay. Jimmy's parents work at a company called Organ INC Farms. What is Organ INC Farms do? it do it researches ways to grow human organs cheaply and effectively yes now jimmy's mother sharon is actually depressed with this work she calls that this is a work based on corruption greed selfishness it includes heartless experiments on animals She's so devastated that one day she abandons her family, which means she abandons her husband, Jimmy's father. She abandons Jimmy also and she runs away, never to return. But along with her, she takes Jimmy's beloved pet, Killer. And Jimmy was in love with Killer. Who is Killer? Killer is a genetic combination of a skunk and a raccoon, which is called a raccoon. So basically, Killer is a raccoon, okay? Not a cat or a dog. He's a raccoon. He's a genetically modified person. You know, right? This novel is all about genetic modification, manipulation in the human body. How can we become dangerous if experiments are done on us, right? Okay. Now, when she leaves, that is when Sharon leaves, Jimmy's father invites his co-worker Ramona to move in. Oh, Jimmy feels very lonely. However, he survives. Why? Because a new student comes in his school who becomes a dear friend of Jimmy. What is the name of this new student? He is Craig. Yes, he is Craig. Actually, his original name is Glenn. But once, you know, Jimmy says, do not call him Glenn. His name is Craig. So we will also call him Craig and not Glenn. Craig is a scientifically gifted young man and the two friends, that is Jimmy and Craig, they spend a lot of time together playing video games like Blood and Roses on Craig's stepfather's computer. They also watch graphic videos of sex and violence on the internet. One particular game that they play is called as Extinctathon. Extinctathon. This game tests players on their knowledge of extinct species. For example, a red necked Craig. And this is from where Craig or Glenn takes his name. Okay. Basically, he excels at this game called as Extinctathon. He knows everything about extinct animals, extinct species on earth. Okay. This is some foresight. Let me tell you. Why is he calling himself Craig? What does he want? What does Glenn want? Does he want that humans should extinct? We'll come to know. One day as the two are watching porn, Jimmy sees a beautiful young girl who catches his attention. And this girl is none other than Oryx. Right now, Jimmy does not know her name. I'm telling you, this girl is Oryx, okay? As they grow up, Jimmy and Craig attend different colleges. Why? 
because their interest in lives are different. Crick is a person of signs and numbers. Therefore, he goes to the prestigious Watson Crick Institute, where he majors in bioengineering. He graduates early and begins his own research projects. Whereas Jimmy, who is a person of words, attends a dilapidated, a very old and a you know, uh, not so good humanity school. Basically, in this novel, what they are showing is science, you know, when it, science is related, where research is related, it has been given a lot of importance as compared to humanities. And Margaret Atwood denies this. You know, actually, Margaret loves art. We know it. Uh, she also is a person of words. And Margaret says, or she said while writing this novel, that we cannot diminish art from our lives. Please do not give science so much importance. Okay. Now, after graduation, come back to the novel, come back to the novel. Where has Craig gone? To a science college. Where has uh, Jimmy gone? To an arts college. After graduation, Jimmy takes a job writing pamphlets for a corporation called Anu Yu. But his work is so depressing, he becomes a heavy drinker and a sex addict. One day on the news channel, Jimmy hears or sees a sex scandal in San Francisco where several girls are kept as slaves in the garages of rich men or the garages of rich men. Looking closely, you know, Jimmy is watching TV and he can see these girls who are kept like slaves in rich men houses. And looking closely, Jimmy sees Oryx among these girls. Oh, and his feelings for her, they erupt again. Okay. Now, in his fifth year at Anu Yu, somehow Jimmy has taken out so many years for this profession of his. Few agents visit Jimmy with a video of his mother's execution, which means Jimmy's mother is no more. Although he never met his mother after she left them, but Jimmy is sad beyond measure. Just after that, he gets a little better when his friend Craig visits him. And here Craig offers him a job at Reju Rejuven Essence or Rejuven Essence. Okay, this is a place where Basically, Craig is conducting his scientific experiments, okay? He is developing a pill, which is called as Bliss Plus. Bliss Plus is the name of the pill. And Craig wants that Jimmy should help promote this Bliss Plus with the help of an ad campaign. Easy? So Jimmy accepts this job, which would involve running an ad campaign for a new pill called as Bliss Plus. To celebrate, Jimmy and Craig go bar crawling in the plea plans. Plea plans, you know? the normal human being area where no scientific experiments are happening. But before they go, Craig injects Jimmy with an injection, with a medicine to protect him from diseases that exist in the plea blands. Past, stop. Let's come back to the present. Present, may what's happening? Snowman or Jimmy is living with Craigers alone near the seashore. Let's start. Now, Snowman is starving. He does not have anything to eat. There are no human beings, right? There's no civilization. Also, he cannot protect himself from predators or genetically modified creatures. Crakers are as usual sturdy and fine. Crakers have been made like this that they can survive in any kind of environment. So Jimmy decides or Snowman decides to visit the Rejuven Essence compound because he knows that there will be food, weapons and other supplies there. He has never left Crakers alone for more than a day, but this time he has to go for three days because it will be a long journey to this Rejuven Essence. So he tells the Crakers he must go and they express their concern about his safety on this long journey. OK, as he begins his journey, he is haunted by the voices from his past and visions of Oryx. Snowman's three day journey to Rejuven Essence is extremely difficult. How? For example, he is hunted by pigoons. Pigoons are again genetically modified species of pig and human organs. One night, his foot gets cut on a piece of glass. But eventually, Snowman makes it to the Rejuven Essence and he goes to the dome at the center of it, which is called Paradise. Okay, so he's walking towards Paradise, which is a dome at the center of this place called as Rejuven Essence. He has come here to take what? 
food, weapons, and other essential things, which will help him survive along with crackers, right? So now again, let's move to the past, to the flashback, right? What is paradise? What is rejuven essence? You should know all this, now. For this, let's go to the past. Paradise is Craig's research project in which he assigned Jimmy a job as well. Remember? To start an ad campaign for Bliss Plus? Craig is working on a dual initiative to eliminate human suffering. Craig says, I want to eliminate human suffering and this is what my research is all about. The first part of this dual initiative is developing a pill called as Bliss Plus, which increases libido, but it has a hidden contraceptive. Everyone who will take Bliss Plus will eventually sterilize, okay, will cannot pr produce babies. Why? Because Craig believes that overpopulation is the foremost cause of human suffering. Bliss Plus currently is being tested on poor sex workers, and it has positive results, right? Craig actually is obsessed with what he calls elegant solutions to human problems. And Craig believes that things like hormones, sex, emotions, attachments are in elegant solutions to reproduction, okay? Craig does not believe in sex, emotions, love, care, history, philosophy. No, 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 no. This is not what humans need for, to survive, okay? This is the first part of his project to develop the pill Bliss Plus. Second part of Project Paradise involves manipulation of human embryos. And this manipulation has resulted in the invention of biologically optimal or favorable humans called as Krakers. And this is the birth of Krakers. That is why they are called as children of Krake. Crake has literally bred curiosity and love out of these crackers. He has actually thrown love and curiosity out of crackers. These crackers are strikingly beautiful with green eyes and skin, which is immune to ultraviolet damage. These crackers have a digestive system just like that of a rabbit so that they can survive on a very simple vegetation. And also in these crackers, copulation occurs only once every three years per female. Can you imagine? When she gives off a pheromone, pheromone is like a chemical, she gives off a pheromone scent and her backside turns blue. This is a trait borrowed from baboons. Then the males know that they can pursue this female. But let me tell you, if a male is not chosen, he will not feel any disappointment or anger. That is how crackers have been developed. They don't feel angry. They don't feel disappointed. Okay, They are very uh, detached, detached kind of creatures. Crake has also bred religion, art, and history out of Crakers. Although Snowman's eventual interaction with the Crakers suggests that this is not true. This experiment has failed. How? Right now only tell me. Remember when Snowman was going, you know, to the Rejoven Essence? The Crakers were very, uh, you know, they were very concerned about his well-being, that he should go safely, return safely, which means they have feelings, okay? Now, one of Craig's employees is Oryx. Yes, Craig has employed Oryx. Craig met Oryx through a prostitution service and eventually hired her for Project Paradise. Oryx is an optimistic, peaceful and positive woman with no ill will towards anybody. Her patience makes her an ideal teacher and caretaker for the Crakers, whom she loves deeply. And Oryx admires Crake and his Project Paradise because Oryx believes that Crake wants to end human suffering. Is this the truth? No, Crake is hypocritical. She also supplies Bliss Plus pills in, where, in whorehouses and sex clinics all over the world. Though Oryx and Crake have a sexual relationship, and, you know, Craig also loves Oryx, but Oryx feels no emotional attachment towards Craig. And eventually, Oryx begins an affair with Jimmy. Yes, this is where the love story of Oryx and Jimmy, it comes. Jimmy loves Oryx deeply and madly, but he is worried often about what will happen if Craig comes to know about their affair. But Oryx insists that Craig has no attachment or jealousy, just like the Crakers that he has created. She also takes a promise from Jimmy that he must take care of the Crakers if anything happens to her ever. Okay, remember this promise. Now we're coming towards the end of the novel. Listen, 
One day, Oryx goes out for pizza and does not come back. Jimmy hears that a terrible plague is raging across every continent on Earth. Just then, Jimmy receives a phone call from Oryx, who is crying and apologizing. What is she saying? Very important revelation. The plague that has hit the continents. This plague had been in the Bliss Plus pills that Oryx was distributing. She had no idea. But... She is the one who has helped spread this plague everywhere. She's the one who has to be blamed. She's crying over it. Jimmy realizes what has happened and knows that he is right now safe in this air-logged paradise dome, okay? He's not out in the plague. This area is actually vacuumed, so he's safe right now. Here the theme is danger of scientific advancement or what cost do we pay to advance scientifically, right? Craig appears outside the dome, demands Jimmy to let him in. Jimmy is very, you know, scared for his life. He hesitatingly opens the door for his friend, but Craig explains him that, Jimmy, you are safe because you have been immunized by the injection that you received when we were going towards the plea lands. And then Craig actually has unconscious Oryx in his arm. He tells Jimmy that Jimmy must take care of the Craigers. And after that, Craig slits Oryx's throat. Jimmy cannot understand what just happened. Did Craig murder Oryx? That is what he did. And out of horror, Jimmy shoots Craig. This way, Oryx and Craig are dead. Jimmy is alone. Plague is spreading outside. Crakers are here. They are evolving. They are developing as, you know, uh, genetically modified human beings. After this incident, Jimmy waits in the dome for weeks, thinking, why did Craig murder Oryx? And also he watches the plague wipe out most of the humanity from those computer screens. And when the right time comes, Jimmy leads the Crakers out of paradise to the seashore where they now live. He chooses the name or he changes his name from Jimmy to Snowman because he wants that he should be seen as someone from the past, Snowman, okay? After what happened to humanity, Jimmy hates Craig. He resents himself, you know, for helping him fulfill Craig's desires. Craig wanted to wipe out humanity and somewhere Oryx and somewhere Jimmy also helped him, right? Right but he cannot abandon Krakers. Why? Because he promised Oryx. With this, we come to the present. Snowman, remember, is in this rejoven essence compound. He has come here to take the supplies. Snowman steps over the remains of Oryx and Krake. Yes, those dead bodies of Oryx and Krake are still there. He steps over the remains of Oryx and Krake as he enters the paradise dome. He quickly gathers the things he needs, but he's very scared of the growing infection on his foot. He journeys back to the Krakers, who are delighted to see him. And can you imagine, while he was away, they drew someone like Snowman for his safe return to them. Here, theme is emotions and art. We cannot escape from emotions and art. That is what Margaret tells us. And Krakers have very good news for Snowman. What is this news? They tell him that they have seen few other men who look just like Snowman, which means they have seen human beings. Yes. Snowman is shocked and happy to hear that humans are still existing somewhere. And the next morning, he tra travels along the shore to find these people. He sees that there are three of them, two men and one woman. They are sitting around a fire on the beach. Snowman's mind wonders what will happen if he goes to talk to them. Will they be friendly? Will they kill him? Are they also genetically modified? Should he approach them as a friend or a foe? Should he even approach them or not? These are the questions that he asks himself and the novel ends. With this, we are done with Oryx and Crake. Did you like it? I loved it. Yes? Literature is fun. It is so good. Yes? Take care of yourself. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, Walat, you better do it now. Share it with your friends and relatives who are in the field of English literature or who just love reading books. Yes? Bye-bye.